What's up guys, I have another fountain pen review for you today. Uh, as you can see from here, it, it's a pilot. Uh, and this pen was supplied by jetpens.com for review. Um, they're a pretty awesome site, so you guys should definitely go check them out. But without further ado, show you guys the pen. This pen is the Pilot Prira. Um, you can see it from the packaging. It's actually pretty nice packaging, uh, considering it's not like the most expensive pen in the world. Like it's like it's a pretty nice clear plastic on top. You know, does well to protect the pen. Um, definitely not what I expected based off of my previous experience with other Pilot pens. Uh, but still, you know, okay nonetheless. It's I wouldn't say as nice as the higher up in price pen cases, pen boxes that they have, uh, but it does the job fine. Um, I'm not really one that keeps a lot of pen boxes around, so it's not really a big deal for me. Uh, you can see here, it came with a black ink cartridge, um, uh, but, you know, me being a fountain pen geek, I, I don't really use cartridges all that much. I kind of feel that they confine you to certain colors and brands of ink and whatnot. So I went ahead and threw a converter into here. Um, first impressions right off the bat is that this pen is actually quite small. Um, you, you know, when you look at images and stuff online of products, you don't really think they're as small as they really are because usually there isn't really a good reference when they take images. Uh, but, you know, let's see, I have, like right here, you know, one of my favorite pens, uh, Pelican M600, you can see it's like, it's actually quite short, like, significantly shorter than the M600, um, and it's a little bit narrower. Uh, I kind of wish I had one to compare with, um, but I'd say actually the thickness of this pen is pretty similar to uh, Pelican M200. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one here to compare, but I do have a Twisby Mini here, and you can see you know, it's just ever so slightly longer than the Twisby Mini. Uh, the thickness is just a hair thinner than the Mini as well. Uh, the Mini isn't the slimmest of pens, it's just quite slim at the section, uh, but the body itself isn't actually that slim. And if I take the caps off, you can actually see that with the caps off, the length of the Prira and the Mini are pretty much almost identical. So it is a very small pen. What does that mean for me? Uh, unfortunately, it means that it's not really a pen I can use for an extended period of time very comfortably. Uh, I have another short pen here. Uh, this is a Koweko Sport, and you can see here, obviously, that you know it's tough to beat out the Koweko Sport in terms of like a pocket-sized pen, but um, comparing the two here, you can see that the Sport is slightly shorter than the Prira. But, um... Yeah, pens these size, they tend, like for me, they tend not to be super well balanced for extended writing periods. Uh, now, in terms of the length, if you're just going to jot down a quick note or something, you know, in, for my hand size, it works. Like, it's not actually being hidden inside the palm of my hands or anything. So I can write with it for a short period of time, but it's not very comfortable. Now, obviously, with this pen, it is postable, and it posts quite securely, like, it almost like snaps into place a little bit and the cap's not going to fly off and that does make the pen longer and more comfortable to write with but at the same time you know purely based off of personal preferences uh, I do find that it makes it a little back heavy and I actually prefer pens to be more neutral in balance or actually more uh, nib heavy than back heavy but other people prefer back heavier pens so it's really entirely up to you um, for me, I used this pen for the past two weeks or so, and uh, it, it's worked out pretty well. Like I said, it's not the most comfortable pen for me. Like for me, my, one of my most ideal pens in terms of size and balance is the M600. So in the future, this will probably be designated as like a backup pen. Uh, it's the same thing that I have like with the Twisby Mini. It was kind of a backup pen where either I would always have it filled with my main color, and if I were switching up inks in my main pen, but if I'm at work and I'm required to write in like a darker colored ink, like a black or a blue black, then I always have like a backup pen that I can use, but at the same time, you know, for personal writing, I can use whatever ink color I want in my main pen. So I use this purely for as an EDC pen for the past two weeks, uh, just to kind of get a feel for it and see how I liked it, how it acted, 
and from here on out, you know, just full disclosure, it's not comfortable for me, unfortunately, but if you have someone with, if you're someone with smaller hands or you prefer a back heavier pen, uh, this can probably work out as an everyday carry pen for you. Uh, because of its short length, it does fit really well in pockets. Um, you can either just drop it straight down in pants pockets, or if you wear button-down shirts that has like a breast pocket, you, you know, this with this length can easily slide into a breast pocket without sticking out too much. You know, with some of the larger pens, uh, they can stick out quite a bit because pockets aren't really made to have hold pens anymore. Um, and the clip is actually quite sturdy. It's actually a re really nice looking clip, in my opinion. You know, it has like a nice curvature here. The tension is good. Uh, you know, if you clip this to your pocket, it's definitely not gonna slide out. In terms of the writing performance, this pen I got in a fine nib. And with Japanese nibs, people tend to agree that they will write one grade finer than European nibs. Uh, so, you know, a European fine will write more, you know, I mean, a Japanese fine will write more like a European extra fine, and a Japanese medium will write more like a European medium. Um, so as a backup pen, getting this in a fine nib is perfect because... You know, when you have a backup pen, you don't necessarily know what quality of paper you're going to write on. Uh, you know, now obviously for me, for my personal writing, I like to use Rhodia. It's a very heavy paper, it's a vellum paper, so it's super smooth, and it doesn't really absorb ink as readily, so ink doesn't really feather or bleed through it. But at the same time, if I, you know, like, if I were to write with my M600 on cheap sub-20 pound copy paper, uh ink will basically just start feathering and bleeding through like crazy and you know at work that's kind of the paper that I use so this actually kind of worked out because with the fine nib even though the line width will increase as you put ink down on the paper because it starts off so fine to begin with um, it won't spread to be that big of a blob and it won't feather as badly because it doesn't put down as much ink um, in terms of the writing performance, you know, I wrote with this pen for around a week before really even looking closer at the nib and doing any work on it. Uh, out of the box, I had issues with startup in that after the first fill, um, I will actually show you, you know, in general, when you uh, stick a cartridge into a pen, into a fountain pen, you do have to wait several minutes for the feed to get primed up before you start writing with it. Uh, but when you fill with a converter like I have here, a CON20 converter, usually you don't really have that issue because since you're having the ink flow through into the converter from the nib end, uh, the feed and nib should be completely primed up and ready to write. In this case, for some reason, at first I didn't know why because I didn't really take a deep closer look at it. It wouldn't write at first, but after I left the pen sitting overnight on my desk and in the morning when I woke up and started writing with it, it really didn't have any issues. Uh, it started writing right away. Um, it did write a little dry for my taste, um, but like I said, it, that's not necessarily a bad thing because if you're worried about your line widths expanding on cheaper paper, then having a dry pen will actually help in that cause because you're just not putting down as much ink into the paper as well. Uh, in terms of the converters, uh, this is basically a cartridge converter pen. I guess, guess you could probably convert it into an eyedropper. I, I'm pretty sure inside the barrel is all plastic. You could just like seal up this end with an O-ring and make it into an eyedropper pen, like a lot of people like to do with the Koweco Sport. Uh, it fits the CON20 and the CON50 converters, and unfortunately it doesn't fit the CON70 converter, just because that converter is just too long for this short of a pen. But, you know, in my mind, I don't really mind. I know a lot of people don't like the CON50 because they feel like the ink capacity is too low. But with a fine nib pen like this, you don't really go through that much ink to begin with. And you you know, you should be able to write several pages with no issues on one fill, on, even on a CON50 converter. Um, when I started first writing with this nib, it was a little scratchy. Uh, it's kind of to be expected when you get a really, really fine nib. Um, just because the finer the nib is, the harder it is to really smooth out, and it's more sensitive to the downward pressure that you might use on it. You know, obviously with like a bigger, if you had a broad nib, uh, it'll be a wetter nib to begin with, just because it's going to lay down more ink in a larger surface area. And in that case, it's actually easier because 
the bigger nib won't really dig into the paper as much as a fine nib will. So it was a little scratchy, it was a little dry. You know, that combination kind of made it a little uncomfortable to write with. Um, a week after using it on a daily basis, I finally decided to just pull the lube out, take a closer look. And I actually discovered that the tines were misaligned. And the reason why they were so misaligned was that the tines were actually too close to each other to the point where if you were to separate the tines, like, you know, let's say this this is like your tines here. Uh, if you were to separate them, it, they would basically overlap. Um, now, the nib on this is a steel nib, and because this is a lower-priced pen, I can't necessarily you know, say that I'm surprised that perhaps the quality control coming out of Pilot isn't the best. Um, you know, this nib is actually the same nib that you find on a lot of the even less expensive Pilot pens, like the Plumix and the Penmanship, uh, and there's 78Gs. Um, but that also means, at the same time, that you can actually swap the nibs out between the different uh, varieties of pens if you know you're not happy with this particular nib uh, here I have a pilot 78 G with a broad nib you know the broad nib is basically kind of like an italic stub nib and I don't want to necessarily take the feed and nib out of this pen because it's filled right now but essentially the nib and feed just pull right out of the section you can see here that it's actually notched and the the nib basically snaps into the feed, so you can't really screw up the placement of the f nib against the feed, and then you would just friction push this back into the section. It's the same thing with this pen. And actually, when I was taking the pen apart to do nib work on it, to try and realign the tines and spread out the tines a little more, that actually helped out quite a bit because it was really easy to take apart, and it's a lot easier to work on a nib when you could just remove just the nib instead of having to try and shim things and realign tines while the nib is still on the pen. Um, in terms of what I found with this pen was that because it was crisscross like that, that was causing it to write very dry because basically it starts to limit capillary action. You know, if you looked at the nib times from the get-go, they were actually quite far apart, but then towards the very tip they were crossing over and it made for a very dry writer, and it made for a very scratchy writer, because even though the tines were technically aligned, uh, if you were to push down slightly at an angle with a little bit too much pressure, you would force the tines to separate a little, up and down a little bit, and then they would overlap, and then you would feel they would be scratchy, and then you would have to reset them. Uh, so what I basically did was I took the nib out, I shimmed between the tines, I realigned them to make sure they were all straightened out and everything. I actually added a little bit more of a gap than what may come out of the Pilot Factory, uh, just because I wanted it to write a little wetter. And now this pen writes really well. You know, I was contemplating maybe switching out with one of my other um, Pilot pe pens with a known smooth nib, but at this point there really isn't any reason to do so. So I will go ahead and write for you guys. I didn't really do any smoothing out in terms of using uh, mylar sheets or, you know, what I do is I use some of my sharpening stuff to smooth out the nib. So this is still a factory polishing job on it, which means it still writes a little bit scratchy. Uh, you know, I like, I prefer my nibs to be super smooth, super buttery, buttery smooth. Um, I've yet to find a factory extra fine nib that does that. So I can't really complain, uh, but for a lot of people, I you know I feel like a lot of people would actually consider this quite smooth, and they would be happy with it because most people would find that having a little bit of feedback actually helps them control the nib when they're writing on paper. But just to give you an example of the uh, line width. And then I will also do a writing sample with the M600. You know, both of these obviously are labeled as fine nibs, although this is a European fine and that's a Japanese fine.
So basically, I'm not sure how easily you'll be able to make it out. Uh, tripod's kind of getting in the way, but you can see that the Japanese fine nib is slightly finer than the European fine in the Pelican M600. Um, like I said before, because I made the nib a little wetter now, if I were to go to a cheaper paper where the ink would spread, uh, then obviously it won't write as fine as it did when I first started using the pen for the first initial week. Um, right now I have very similar uh, wetness in terms of uh, the ink in the pens, uh, so you know that shouldn't really play a factor in it. Uh, but of course, since I'm using like a really smooth vellum paper, uh, the ink's not really going to spread at all. Um, this another reason why this pen would actually make a nice everyday carry pen is that it's a snap cap. Um, you know, for fountain pen users who work in an office environment and they have to constantly, you know, screw on and off the cap on their fountain pens, it does kind of become a hassle. So if having a feature of a snap cap is nice because it makes it for ready ac access to the pen. You know, let's say you're at a meeting, you need to take some notes, you could quickly jot it, and instead of leaving the nib out to dry, you could just quickly snap it back in place. Now, if you listen closely, you can actually feel like it snaps authoritatively into place, and you can actually hear click. Like that. And to me, that told me told me right off the bat that it would actually seal very well. Uh, there actually is an inner cap in here, which you probably won't be able to see, um, but you can see in the demonstrator version, but I'll get to that later. Um, that inner cap does a really good job in sealing the pen. Uh, initially, I had filled this with Noodler's 54th Massachusetts, which kind of, in my experience, has a reputation of drying really readily on the nib and making it a hard start. Um, in this pen, even though I filled it, like I said, before I adjusted the tines or anything, and it was a super dry writer, uh, I could basically write with this pen with 54th Massachusetts in it, cap it, set it down on my table, and then in the morning when I woke up, it would start writing right away. Still writing dry, of course, because that's not going to improve overnight, but, you know, with no hard starting issues, I don't have to, like, kind of shake some ink towards the nib or, you know, squeeze the converter to force some ink to prime the feet or anything. So that tells me that this seals quite well, and, you know, I don't see any reason why you couldn't leave this there for a week or so and, you know, just pick up the pen and start writing with, writing with it right away. Uh, before, I had stated earlier that this does come in a demonstrator version, uh, now, you know, I believe these, the solid colored pre aren't as readily as available as the demonstrator versions in the U.S. I'm not exactly sure why, but I actually prefer the solid colored version over the demonstrator. Uh, this one happens to be in slate gray. And the reason why I prefer the solid color over the demonstrator is because it's a converter pen and a cartridge pen. I just don't really feel like the pens look that great in a demonstrator, you know, like... When you have a converter sticking in there, like, it just kind of looks ugly versus if you were to have a piston fill pen like, you know, something like the the uh, Twist B Mini, where you can actually see the inner workings of something somewhat interesting inside the pen. Um, I do have another pile of pen here. Ugh, let me just pull out of the pen case. You know, here is um, Pilot Custom 74. And... This one, I didn't mind as much having this as a demonstrator because this pen actually fits the Con70 converter. So it actually fills up the entire space and gives you something interesting to look at. You know, when you have a converter that, that you stuff in here, uh, it's only really going to come up to probably here. Uh, the Con50 isn't much... T I think it's like the same length as a standard pilot converter. And the Con70 is actually pretty close in length as well. So you end up with like a dead space here in the very top of the pen. And because... The cap on the demonstrator is also clear. It, you know, it, the, the demonstrators just have accent, colored accents on the uh, tail and cap end. Um, but because this cap is also clear as well, they didn't actually go with an inner cap that was translucent. It's actually a white cap. Uh, so if you look at pictures, you know, in my mind, it looks kind of ugly. Uh, you know, they definitely could have gone with a translucent inner cap in the demonstrator version and it would look a lot cooler just because you would be able to see the nib and the feed inside. Uh, the section is also clear on the demonstrator so when the cap is you know capped onto the pen it just looks like a really cool package to look at uh, but in this case with the white cap the opaque white cap and the fact that it doesn't fit a Con70 converter you know I would definitely go with 
one of the solid colors instead. And it does come with in several pretty cool colors, in my opinion. This is more discreet, slate gray, so I'm kind of a boring person in that aspect. So I decided to go with this color. But yeah, uh, final impressions about the pen, uh, like I said earlier, makes a great pocket pen, makes a great everyday carry pen for short periods of writing because of how small and lightweight it is. Uh, not the most comfortable for me in terms of extended writing, um, but if you have smaller hands or you prefer lighter pens or maybe you're just used to writing with smaller pens, then I don't see any issues with it. Uh, because the nib and feed pulls out so readily, and it's a steel nib that's pretty inexpensive and easier to replace with less expensive pilot pens. Uh, you can definitely have no issues working on the pen nibs. Um, you know, you could try adjusting the tines. You can try smoothing it out. And, you know, worst comes to worst, if you end up messing up the steel nib, you can just spend like $10 and get another nib from a penmanship or a plumix and then just basically replace it or uh, you could get 78 G's for around ten dollars as well even though there's this continued um, so you don't have to worry about maybe something like this with a gold nib where if you screw up the nib uh, you're not gonna get a replacement and then if you have to buy a replacement pen you have to spend around a hundred dollars again so pretty cool pen uh, there were some issues but for a lower cost pen I would expect that you're probably not going to get 100% quality all the time. And I see no reason why, you know, if you were to get a lemon from Pilot, uh, you can always go back to your distributor and basically exchange it for a different pen and hopefully you'll get lucky and not get the one pen that's happened to get through their quality control. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hope you found it useful and thanks for watching.